In the heart of Japan, a culinary enigma is fast unfolding, leaving food enthusiasts and curious minds around the world utterly perplexed. Why, in a nation renowned for its gastronomic prowess, don't they indulge in the tantalizing bounty of millions of coconut crabs? These monstrous crustaceans, renowned for their colossal size and succulent meat, roam the lush jungles of the Pacific Islands. Whoa. There's so many around right here. I'm trying not to get bitten. Yet they remain conspicuously absent from Japanese plates. Is it a culinary secret too tantalizing to share? Or are there hidden mysteries behind this remarkable omission? Join us on an extraordinary culinary expedition as we delve into the mysterious tale behind the absence of coconut crabs from Japanese cuisine. This is a full-sized coconut crab. Oh. The Extraordinary Existence of Coconut Crabs Have you ever strolled along the beach and encountered those adorable hermit crabs? You know, those little creatures that amble along with their bodies cozily tucked inside shells, leaving only their three pairs of legs and pinchers poking out. They're quite the comical sight. But let us introduce you to their larger relatives, who surprisingly share the same family tree the coconut crab. Despite belonging to the hermit crab superfamily, these coconut crabs are remarkably different. One striking feature of the coconut crab is its impressive leg span, which can sometimes extend up to a whopping three feet. Not only are their legs impressive, but they also possess seriously strong pinchers. These pinchers can lift objects weighing about 66 pounds, a feat that would pose quite a challenge even for a human. What's more astonishing is that these crabs themselves weigh only around nine pounds. Coconut crabs might appear rather peculiar, Picture absurdly large land-dwelling crustaceans that hunt birds. It almost feels like a scene from a science fiction movie. One can't help but wonder how something so unique could exist. But the truth is that these extraordinary qualities serve coconut crabs exceptionally well in their remote island habitats. They've earned a place in the Guinness World Records. This species is considered the largest crustacean that spends its entire adult life on land. And when we talk about their adulthood, it's truly remarkable, as coconut crabs can live for as long as 60 years. The name coconut crab arises from their knack for cracking open green coconuts to relish the delicious white flesh inside. However, these crustaceans don't stop at coconuts. Surprisingly, they are ruthless predators. Their diet includes rats, their fellow coconut crabs, and even large migratory seabirds, particularly the boobies that nest on their islands. These birds bear the brunt of the coconut crab's voracious appetite. Coconut crabs employ a rather clever strategy for their predation. They strike under the cover of darkness, seizing unsuspecting prey that ventures too close. This behavior is an adaptation driven by their limited food options on land. While on land, coconut crabs sometimes have to search for alternatives to coconuts, as they can't venture into the water. If they do, they would immediately drown, as they cannot swim, let alone hunt in the water. Swimming might not be their forte, but the coconut crab's key strength lies in their incredible power. These crustaceans can lift weights exceeding 66 pounds, which is roughly the weight of a 10-year-old child. While everyone's heard about their coconut cracking skills, the true power of their pinches remained shrouded in mystery for quite some time. However, in 2016, scientists in Okinawa, Japan captured 29 coconut crabs and had them put steel force sensors to the test. The pinching force varied among the crabs, ranging from 29 to a whopping 1,765 newtons. Just for reference, a human bite exerts about 340 newtons of force. But the research didn't stop there. It turned out that the power of the coconut crab's pinch depended on how heavy the crab was. The scientists discovered that a 9-pound coconut crab can exert a force of about 3,300 newtons with its pincher. That's stronger than the bite of most land animals, including leopards, many bears, and wild dogs. Thanks to these formidable weapons, coconut crabs didn't need shells for protection. They could easily fend off predators and just as effortlessly access new food sources like coconuts. You can get up to a 90 centimeter leg span to leg span. The unstoppable appetite of the coconut crab. The mighty coconut crab, also known as the robber crab, isn't your average beach-dwelling crustacean. It hails from the pristine shores of Australia, where one remarkable incident left a group of unsuspecting golfers both baffled and amazed. With pincers of incredible power, 
these crabs can effortlessly crush just about anything that crosses their path. On a sunny day on an Australian golf course, a group of golfers, eager to enjoy their game, suddenly found themselves face to face with an unexpected adversary, a colossal coconut crab. This formidable crab, with a single swift snap, cleaved a golf club in two, leaving the golfers in a state of shock. It was as if the crab possessed the strength of a chainsaw hidden within its formidable claws. The intriguing tale of this incident doesn't stop there. The video footage reveals the crab making its way toward a bag of golf clubs, almost as if it had a vendetta against the sport. A brave man attempted to wrest the clubs away from the crab's grasp, but the relentless crustacean was undeterred. In a display of sheer power, the crab succeeded in snapping one of the clubs in half. It seems that coconut crabs have little fondness for golf, but a remarkable appetite for more unusual fare. When it comes to their diet, these resourceful creatures are far from picky eaters. Their primary culinary preference is the soft, white flesh of coconuts. But they don't shy away from indulging in a variety of other foods. Fruits and leaves are on the menu. And they even take their diet to extreme heights by feasting on the exoskeletons of fellow crustaceans, providing a calcium boost for their shell growth. Their gastronomic adventures don't end there, as they've been known to make meals of chickens, kittens, and even their fellow crab companions. What truly astonishes scientists and observers alike is the remarkable ability of these crustaceans to locate their diverse menu of delectable treats. With insect-like finesse, the coconut crab relies on its keen sense of smell to track down food sources. Using its antennae, it diligently sniffs out the scent trails that lead to its next feast. In an extraordinary display of resourcefulness, the coconut crab invests significant brain power into this pursuit, leaving no stone unturned in its quest for a satisfying meal. Unmasking the Amelia Earhart Coconut Crab Conspiracy Amelia Earhart's mysterious disappearance has long captivated the imagination of those who hear her tale. She was not just a pioneering aviator but also a courageous author, becoming the first woman to soar solo across the vast Atlantic Ocean. Yet, it was her ambitious attempt to circumnavigate the globe that led to her vanishing into the annals of history. One prevailing theory proposes an intriguing twist to this enigma, suggesting that her final destination may not have been the boundless Pacific Ocean, but instead, a remote atoll known as the Nicaro Atoll, inhabited by an unusual and menacing inhabitant, the Coconut Crab. For those unfamiliar with the story, here's a swift recap. Amelia Earhart's daring feats in aviation made her a household name. Her fateful journey around the world ended in disappearance, leaving the world to wonder about her ultimate fate. It is in this realm of uncertainty that the coconut crab enters the scene, attracting speculation about its involvement in the mystery. The coconut crab possesses a keen sense of smell, a characteristic that piqued the curiosity of those considering Earhart's disappearance. Could these mammoth crabs have been drawn to the scent of the lost aviator? While some might find this idea peculiar, it is not without evidence. In 1940, scientists on a remote island stumbled upon a skeletal discovery that bore a striking resemblance to Amelia Earhart's description. Initially, it was assumed to be the remains of a man. However, as time passed, doubts began to creep in. Intriguing evidence began to surface, hinting at the grim possibility that this was the place where Earhart met her untimely end. One compelling piece of evidence pointing toward the coconut crabs as culprits in this mystery is their astonishing ability to strip flesh and bones. In 2007, researchers decided to put this ability to the test. They used a small pork carcass as a stand-in for a human body to determine what these crustaceans were capable of. To their astonishment, the coconut crabs swiftly and efficiently stripped the bones off the carcass and scattered them around. This macabre experiment mirrored a chilling scenario, potentially revealing what might have happened to Amelia Earhart. What makes this theory all the more plausible is the unique set of attributes that coconut crabs possess. They have the necessary tools to dismantle a human body, not to mention the incredible strength that they wield. Their pincers can exert immense pressure, allowing them to crush coconuts with ease. This strength is not limited to cracking open fruits. It can be used for much darker purposes. However, there is another layer to the coconut crab's role in this mystery. Some of these crustaceans seem to exhibit an unsettling behavior, actively searching for 
weapons. This behavior adds a sinister twist to the story. These creatures, in their scavenging nature, may have come across the aviator's belongings or equipment, further deepening the mystery. Did the coconut crabs, attracted by Earhart's scent, not only consume her remains but also make off with parts of her plane or other items? This chilling prospect introduces new questions into the already baffling narrative. The night the coconut crab became a thief. In the tranquil paradise of Okinawa, a tourist reveled in the joys of an island vacation, blissfully unaware of the bizarre encounter that awaited him one fateful night. Beneath the starry canopy of the Okinawan sky, he slumbered peacefully in his tent, cocooned in dreams of turquoise waters and swaying palm trees. Little did he know that the tranquility of the night would soon be disrupted by an unexpected, almost comical, intruder. As the man slumbered, a peculiar disturbance stirred in the vicinity of his campsite. The silence of the night was pierced by a strange scratching noise, a sound that was as enigmatic as it was unnerving. In the hush of the night, curiosity nudged the man from his slumber, beckoning him to investigate the source of this weird disturbance. Gently unzipping the tent flap, he peered out into the moonlit darkness, his eyes adjusting to the silver glow of the landscape. What he saw defied logic and ignited a sense of wonder mixed with bemusement. There, right before his eyes, was a sneaky coconut crab, a creature known for its hefty, armor-like exoskeleton and a taste for the unconventional. But this coconut crab was different. It was not scuttling about in search of a coconut, its usual fare. Instead, it was making a hasty escape, clutching an unexpected prize, the tourist's very own knife. The sight of a crab absconding with his blade left the man bewildered and bemused, for it was a peculiar spectacle, a sight not often witnessed by even the most seasoned travelers. The intrigue deepened as the man pondered, why do these crustaceans have such an affinity for knives? Oddly enough, this wasn't the first recorded incident of coconut crabs purloining sharp objects. It marked the fourth peculiar video of these curious creatures snatching knives. The man, sharing his perplexity, contemplated the enigma of the situation. The answer, it seems, lay in the irresistible allure of the knife itself. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed that the knife held traces of leftover food, a savory remnant that acted as a siren's call for the scavenging crab. Just as a chef's knife is coveted for its precision, to the coconut crab, it appeared to be the ultimate culinary tool, offering a delectable promise of nourishment. Intriguingly, had the coconut crab not claimed this culinary artifact, it might have easily fallen into the clutches of another notorious thief of the night the raccoon. Raccoons, with their nimble paws and insatiable appetites, are renowned for their indiscriminate thievery, grabbing anything that piques their curiosity and tantalizes their senses. The peculiar antics of these coconut crabs might lead one to ponder another intriguing question, one that Steve and his inquisitive companion often explore in their videos. Why don't people eat them? These crabs, observed to be sizable and presumably tasty, appear to be a tantalizing source of sustenance. However, the answer to this culinary riddle is not as straightforward as one might imagine. The heart of the matter lies in the scarcity of comprehensive research on these intriguing creatures. Consequently, their population size remains shrouded in mystery. It is this uncertainty that adds a layer of complexity to the equation. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, these coconut crabs are classified as vulnerable, a categorization that casts a shadow on the notion of consuming them. The vulnerability of the coconut crab, despite their seemingly appetizing qualities, can be attributed to various factors. The insatiable appetite of human beings for these delectable creatures is one reason. Crabs, with their succulent and plentiful meat, are highly sought after, making them a prized catch among those with discerning palates. When something is so delectable, it becomes a challenge to muster support for the conservation of the species, as culinary cravings often overshadow ecological concerns. However, the peril faced by coconut crabs is not solely due to human appetites. Climate change casts a looming shadow, further jeopardizing their fragile existence. As the Earth's climate continues to shift, coastal environments, including those in which coconut crabs thrive, face the impact of rising sea levels and changing ocean temperatures. These alterations in their natural habitat can disrupt their populations, making them even more susceptible to decline. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, some governments have implemented restrictions on the capture of coconut crabs, imposing limits on the number one can catch. 
This protective measure is a step towards preserving this enigmatic species, safeguarding their place in the delicate ecosystem of Okinawa and its surrounding regions. When exploring the distribution of these extraordinary crustaceans on a map, a distinctive pattern emerges. Coconut crabs inhabit a rather limited range, constrained by the fact that they cannot survive in aquatic environments. This unique ecological niche adds a layer of vulnerability to their already precarious existence. Hey, around right here. I'm trying not to get bitten. I'm literally surrounded by coconut crabs right here. Red crabs and coconut crabs. On the remote shores of Australia's Christmas Island lies a phenomenon that's nothing short of mesmerizing, an annual event where nature weaves an astonishing spectacle. In this idyllic haven, nestled 500 miles off the Indonesian coast, the star of the show is none other than the humble crab. Here, nature orchestrates a breathtaking phenomenon with her whimsical brush, painting the landscape with millions of red crabs. These crimson creatures, like a crimson tidal wave, engulf the island with their vibrant presence, causing the roads to vanish beneath a sea of crustacean bodies. The beaches, usually sun-kissed and serene, find themselves draped in a thick, living carpet of crabs. To an unsuspecting visitor, it's a scene plucked right from the heart of a horror movie, as some of these crabs with their elongated legs almost resemble weird spiders. But for the island's inhabitants, it's a yearly spectacle, a phenomenon as common as the sunrise. Late November is the appointed hour when this astonishing crab invasion graces the island. The earth trembles beneath the collective movement of the red crab horde as they make their way towards the beckoning coastline. This pilgrimage is no mere coincidence. It's nature's unique way of signaling the island's well-being. The astonishing numbers and synchronicity of this event underscore the healthy ecosystem that Christmas Island has to offer. The meticulous research conducted by the Australian National Parks Department confirms the island's status as a crab haven. It's not just the red crabs that populate this land. In fact, there are a staggering 14 different species of crabs that call this paradise home. Their migration to the Indian Ocean is not an aimless wander, but rather a critical part of their breeding cycle. The red crabs have their biological clocks calibrated with a celestial touch. Their breeding season aligns perfectly with the phases of the moon. Come November and December, the island's inhabitants and visitors can witness the coastline adorned with the mystical ritual of spawning. There's even an occasional surprise in late October when these crimson travelers take a leap of faith during the last lunar quarter. While the red crabs might steal the limelight, Christmas Island has yet another crustacean celebrity in its ranks, the infamous coconut crab. These colossal crustaceans often make unexpected appearances, disrupting the tranquil island life. Imagine an outdoor barbecue under the canopy of stars, and then imagine these massive creatures making an uninvited appearance, eyeing your culinary delights. For the smaller species of crabs, such encounters are no laughing matter, as the coconut crabs view them as delectable snacks. To harmoniously coexist with this remarkable crab population, locals and national park staff have devised ingenious solutions. They construct covert tunnels to guide the crabs safely along their migratory path. These tunnels serve as crab-friendly highways, ensuring that their journey to the shoreline remains uninterrupted. Additionally, they wield rakes with great determination, clearing the roads cluttered with crabs, thus reducing the risk of accidental crab casualties due to cars and bicycles. It's not just automobiles and bicycles that face the crab's wrath. They can, on occasion, become an unforeseen hazard to pedestrians, too. The armor-like exoskeleton of these crabs can inflict significant damage, including puncturing tires. So, while their natural beauty is undeniable, it's essential to exercise caution when coexisting with this enchanting crab community. How Rangers Protected the Crab Kingdom On Christmas Island, a remarkable story of conservation unfolds. To safeguard the delicate balance between people and crabs, the dedicated rangers conceived a unique solution, the Crab Bridge. This whimsical structure gracefully arches over the island's busiest road, preparing for the grand annual crab breeding spectacle. As the crimson crabs embark on their journey from the forest to the ocean, the rangers orchestrate a harmonious coexistence between the crawling critters and the speeding vehicles. These astute protectors erected barriers along the road's edge, shielding the scuttling crabs from the peril of car tires. Their intent was twofold 
protect the crabs and ensure the safety of travelers. A colossal 16-ton bridge emerged, designed with a singular purpose, to aid crabs in their annual migration across the island. Yet, beyond its practicality, this arched marvel became an enchanting tourist attraction, an uncommon testament to human compassion for these miniature, armor-clad travelers. However, the rangers' efforts extended beyond the crab bridge. Across the island, they carved out 31 underpasses, creating safe passages for the crabs. These underpasses, like secret tunnels, ensure that crabs can journey unhindered and unharmed. While it's not a foolproof solution, the sheer number of crabs on Christmas Island is staggering. Once, it was home to approximately 43.7 million adult crabs. Tragically, recent years have seen the loss of about 10 to 15 million of these resilient crustaceans. Despite their formidable presence, they have a formidable adversary, the yellow crazy ants. Inadvertently introduced between 1915 and 1934, these ants quietly conquered the island, forming colossal super colonies comprising millions of workers and thousands of queens by the 1990s. It's no coincidence that this species ranks among the largest invasive species in the world. These relentless invaders posed a real threat to the indigenous crab population, triggering the need for the ranger's creative solutions. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the heart of the Okinawa archipelago, a place of great beauty and wonder, over a third of its land is now a sanctuary, a haven for the unique and fascinating coconut crabs. Not too long ago, these incredible creatures were teetering on the brink of extinction, with their population dwindling to just a mere hundred. In a commendable move, the authorities in Makako Gima City, located on Makako Island, took a decisive step to safeguard these enigmatic coconut crabs. They declared the creation of an entire sanctuary, spanning four districts within the city, covering a vast expanse of 17 million square feet. To ensure the crab's survival, a city ordinance was enacted, putting a 20-year ban on capturing these crabs starting in April 2014. Makako Gima City's commitment to preserving this rare species is truly admirable. They are not stopping at mere protection, but also have plans to establish a breeding program for the coconut crabs. This initiative serves a dual purpose conserving the species, and allowing controlled, sustainable human use. The choice to refrain from including coconut crabs on Japanese dinner tables is more than just about their scarcity. These crabs, though meaty, offer a flavor not so distinct from the more common crab species. Hence, instead of indulging in a delicacy that could push a species closer to extinction, there are other crustaceans readily available that can grace Japanese dining tables without guilt. Let us know what you think about what we just showed you. The epic journeys of crabs around the globe. Yellow crazy ants, with their astonishing reproductive speed, are more than just prolific breeders. They are expert executioners. These minuscule marauders unleash their secret weapon, formic acid, targeting the crustacean's sensitive eye stalks and leg joints. This deadly acid blinds and immobilizes the hapless crabs, sealing their fate with a merciless choice, succumb to dehydration or become the ant's macabre meal. The ant armies, numbering in the millions, orchestrate an unparalleled mass Massacre, decimating tens of millions of crabs. In contrast, Cuba faces its yearly crab dilemma. Each spring, a multitude of diminutive red crabs emerges from the lush rainforests encircling the Bay of Pigs, seeking their moment of procreation. The crabs initially rendezvous in the woods for a chance at romance, but the real action takes place in the waters. Female crabs embark on a grueling journey, spanning up to six miles, which can span multiple days. Along the way, they encounter various obstacles, from streets and curbs to the enticing yet treacherous pools of beachside resorts. On sunny days, these crimson crawlers must seek shelter to avoid desiccation and certain death. Typically, the crab invasion unfolds during the evening, persisting over several weeks and throwing everyday life into chaos. This invasion mirrors the grim spectacle on Christmas Island, where crabs meet their demise under car wheels, leaving roads shrouded in their remains. These crab vehicle encounters inflict additional woes, puncturing tires and forcing car owners into unplanned financial burdens, creating a lose-lose scenario for all involved in this scorching part of the globe. In some places, people love to keep their doors wide open. It's all cozy and comfortable until it's time for the crab migration. When that happens, folks have to change their routine. You see, if they hesitate even for a moment, they could find their home swarmed by about 30 to 40 of these critters. It's like a little crab invasion. Now, for the locals, this crab invasion is like a gold mine. 
Tourists are more than happy to cough up a pretty penny for car tire repairs, even if it seems a bit pricey by Cuban standards. But these crabs, oh boy, they've got quite the journey ahead of them. You see, the crabs that make it to the shore without becoming roadkill or ending up in someone's living room face their final challenge, laying their eggs without diving into the water. These crabs like it down on the ground, and they can't survive in the sea once their eggs are safely in the water. After a few weeks, these baby crabs hatch and scuttle off onto dry land, heading into the woods to start a new life cycle. Now, let's talk about some slightly different crabs called red tuna crabs. They made a grand appearance on Southern California beaches in 2015 and 2016. These crabs are usually great swimmers and go with the flow of tides, winds, and currents. But when they hit the cooler waters up north, they get quite the shock and end up washed ashore in massive numbers. Although many crabs meet their end on the shores of Southern California, a few manage to make it back to the sea. Experts suggest that these events happen periodically and don't pose a big threat to the crab population. It's mostly bad luck with the currents, but you know who's loving it? The seagulls. During one of these crab strandings, marine biologists saw seagulls having such a feast that they couldn't even take off afterwards. So why don't we eat these crabs? Well, that depends on where you are. In Australia, only a few crabs sometimes end up squished by cars. They have these nifty crab crossings, and both locals and authorities work together to keep the crabs safe. They even sweep the crabs off the road before driving on it. But when it comes to Christmas Island crabs, they aren't dinner material. They're quite small, full of water, and their meat isn't anything to write home about. So it's not worth catching or even picking up the unlucky ones on the road. From Cuba to California, Cuba, a land surrounded by inviting coasts, offers a rich buffet of delectable crab species. Among the tempting treasures of the sea, the Caribbean spiny lobster, Caribbean rock crab, and the renowned blue crab adorn the Cuban culinary landscape. However, a vital aspect of this aquatic feast lies in careful regulation, aiming to maintain the well-being of these underwater populations. While the seafood-loving Cubans savor these oceanic delights, a peculiar crab roams the streets and roads, untouched on their plates. The red crabs, though intriguing, bear a dark secret within their shells. They store significant quantities of tungsten, a menacing heavy metal hazardous to human health. Their digestive system, equally tainted, contains toxins that may induce discomfort, from nausea and stomach aches to vomiting, throbbing headaches, and even dizzying seizures. These toxins can accumulate in the human body, leading to enduring and severe effects. Consequently, red crabs are a regrettable choice for your menu. Venture across the seas to California, and you'll uncover a different tale. Here, the crabs, the silent wanderers of the shore, find refuge in the protective embrace of the Marine Life Protection Act. Man's interference is forbidden, allowing nature to take its course. If the tides do not sweep these crabs away before their final moments, the beachgoers might endure an unpleasant olfactory experience. It's not just a matter of legality, Consuming these crabs can be a perilous endeavor. They feast on plankton, unwittingly ingesting toxins that pose a health hazard. In this scenario, the true beneficiaries are the seagulls, who enjoy an uncontested feast from nature's bounty. In the world of crabs, the choices can be as colorful as their shells, with the sea and the law dictating the rules of the feast. Also, in the heart of Italy, a delicious solution is brewing to tackle the troublesome invasion of blue crabs. Seafood, a cherished part of the Italian culinary tradition, has fallen prey to these crustacean invaders, posing a severe threat to the local economy and worldwide shellfish supply. These pesky crabs, it's believed, hitched a ride from the United States in the ballast water of cargo ships and have now made themselves at home in Italian waters. The Italian government determined to address this crisis has allocated a substantial 2.9 million EUR to combat the blue crab invasion. Experts agree that removing this invasive species won't be a walk in the park. However, they propose a creative approach, recognizing the blue crab as a delectable food resource. By promoting the consumption of these crabs, they aim to tackle the invasion head-on. This scheme is a savory stroke of genius. Blue crabs, when prepared and served the Italian way, are a delectable treat, turning the problem into a palatable solution. Interestingly, in Tunisia, a similar crab conundrum emerged a decade ago when these crabs first appeared in local waters. However, the Tunisians took a different approach. They embraced these blue crabs as a valuable commodity and now boast around 50 processing plants, providing substantial income for local fishermen. Italy is now on its way to replicating Tunisia's success, 
transforming the blue crab problem into a seafood solution that not only preserves the unique flavors of Italian cuisine, but also supports the livelihoods of local fishermen. As Italian chefs and seafood enthusiasts turn these invasive creatures into culinary delights, it's not just a meal, it's a tasty triumph over adversity. Would you try a dish made from coconut crabs if it were available in your area? Let us know in the comments below.